I can tell you why I did what I wanted to do. I can tell you the things I've done. And I'm not saying it's any brag. There's really no, there's not bragging. Like, even though I wasn't a very good athlete, I got scholarships and I played briefly for two Division One colleges. They were way down in Division One. <laughs> these weren't the these weren't the Notre Dames of the world. But as soon as I got the scholarships, I didn't care anymore. And then I wanted to be a writer, and I was published in Harper's, which at the time was considered, you know, one of the great magazines. And as soon as I did that, I lost interest in writing. And I had, I've had a number of things that I've been fairly successful. A good friend of mine said to me, Kier, you've been almost great at many things. <laughs> he was probably right. Uh, but what I realized is what I was really after, what I w and I remember when we optioned the screenplay, I was not doing well in my life, in my career or anything. I mean, I had no money. I had an old broken down car. It was in Burbank when we got the word. It was 100 degrees out. My writing partner was a fairly well-known actor. And I was out there with him because he was doing one of those voiceover things you do when you do a movie and then they need to clean the dialogue up in the sound stage. And I'm sitting on the curb in Burbank and my car won't start, this old beat up car, and I get the word that we've optioned. We didn't make a fortune, we made a little bit of money. And I mean, I needed a battery for my car. Dude, I did not have the money for a battery. And I was probably in my 40s, you know. I mean, I was by anyone's standards by now, a complete failure. And I remember sitting on the curb and, and my friend, who was very kind to me, gave me his credit card because he had to go for an audition and called the wrecker, the AAA guy, and took me to the garage. And I didn't have the money to pay. And the, the guys at the garage said, well, come back tomorrow. We trust you for the money. And they did, and I did. But I remember sitting on the curb and thinking, here it is. Coming out here cost me a lot. It cost me a marriage. It cost me a lot. And I'm sitting on the curb in Burbank, 100 degrees, and thinking, I still don't feel OK about myself. Because everything that I did was to feel good about myself, to get it from somewhere else, from being an athlete, from being on the radio, from being a business guy, from being a writer. Everything. And as soon as I tried something and had success, and I still felt crappy about myself, I just stopped doing it. I it didn't because I wasn't doing it because I wanted to write per se. I was doing it because I wanted I wanted the recognition. I wanted I, I, I didn't realize then I had to get it from inside of me. I thought I could get it from outside. I remember my dream about playing football was, you know, in the old days, they used to the team would run out through the goalposts. Now they come out, you know, through the through the uh, tunnel, you know, and everybody cheers. I mean, that was it. That's why I was doing it. That's the only reason I was doing it. And in most of my life, uh, you, know, I, you know, sadly to say, I live that way. What I'm trying to get at is examine what you think you're going to get out of it. So say you're a vlog star and you're handsome and you do it. So, so, so then what happens? What do you get out of it? What, what is the important part? And I think when we start examining that, we start to understand that these things are just, just things we're doing to feel better about ourselves that finally someone will recognize we're okay. Finally, we'll feel okay about ourselves. And that's like a big deal. And most of the people I meet want to be, you know, they're like here you learn in Hollywood, there are two kinds of people. There are people who want to be actors and there are people who want to be stars. The people that want to be stars many times become stars. Uh, they don't take acting lessons. They don't do all that stuff. You know, they schmooze and they do what they do and they're in movies and you see them and I see them. But there's a lot of little theater here and, and the, the actors that are really want to be actors, they don't really care. I mean, it's really nice when they get a movie or the TV show and they make a bunch of money, but they're always acting and improving their talent and their skills because they want to act. There are other people who just want to be stars because they need the recognition. If, you've ever, if you're ever in the dating game and you date uh, an actor, an actress, you'll soon find out that the better looking they are and the more successful they are, the more insecure they are. Because they're looking, you know, to the outside to feel good about themselves. And I'm not putting them down. We all have some of that. So look at yourself. Ask yourself the question, why is it important you to even make vlogs? I mean, what's in it for you? What do you get out of that? 
okay? Is it because you have a great message to tell that I need to hear and that's just a vehicle for it? Is it because you wanna be famous or you wanna be rich or you wanna be well known? I, I don't know, but I'm guessing that it, that there's another, there's like an ulterior motive for people wanting to do things, you know? And if you can, if you can identify that and you can figure out how to solve, how to get that from within, then you can go on your real, on your path, on whatever, whatever your path is. See, I have discovered over the last 20 years that this is my path. Like I'm good at motivating people and helping them find their journey. That's what I do. I don't study to do this. I didn't prepare for today. I made up six sentences I sent. And a friend of mine asked me when I came up why I'm not gonna prepare. And I said, because I've learned the fundamental philosophy of life that I have, and it doesn't change. It's, it's not different here than it is if I'm in a with a client or if I'm with my daughter or talking to my grandson. It's always the same. To try to help people find out who they really are and what they really want to do and then help them, give them some sort of technical advice on how to get where they want to go. And when I meet people on their path, they're pretty easy to see because they're excited about what they do and they can't wait to tell you about it.